Okay. Five o'clock, Melissa. Should we start? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yes. Let's go ahead yes. and begin. We're going to start the recording, as you can see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, would you like to say anything, Mac, before I go ahead or you want to? Oh, you should go ahead. Yes. You want me to go? Okay, I'll get started. Well, welcome. We would, we're so pleased tonight to have Deb Uzi, who is the coordinator of multilingual student programs uh, at Penn State Ban Brandywine, the co-coordinator of the multilingual student course cluster, and she's advisor to the Campus Multicultural Club. So, um, and she's also received her BA in English from Loyola University and her MA in TESOL from Westchester. She's previously taught in Thailand and she's traveled to 13 countries in both Europe and Asia. And she's privileged to learn from the global citizens, excuse me, uh, she's encountered in her classroom and sees the diversity of the Penn State Brandywine student body as one of its greatest strengths. So welcome, and we are so pleased to have you this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I guess, um, so especially since we have a small group, um, it might be good just if we could just go around real quick and introduce um, yourself, maybe where you teach, and maybe what, what attracted to you to this topic, um, that that would be really great. Um, so I just heard, did she say Mo instead of Mohammed? Is that the nickname of? Oh, Mac. Yeah, Mac. Mac. I go, yeah. Mac. It's actually, Mac. yes, I Muhammad Ali Khan. So uh, I'm Muhammad Ali Khan, go by Mac. Mac. Um, uh, I, I'm a TESOL person. Uh, for quite some time, all in my life. And my interest in the topic is um, how we can make multilingual speakers competent and expert. And that's that's all we, the entire field is actually working at. So I'm very excited to attend this conversation, especially whenever I get an opportunity to, to hear a classroom account, um, I'm always fascinated. I wanna see how classroom discourses help our learners. Okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I'm just going to go down the line, Melissa. If you want to just introduce real quick, we'll go down the line. Sure. I'm Melissa Toomey. I'm from Temple University, and I'm teaching um, the students who are in both our our ESL classes and all sort of undergraduate courses uh, across the board. So I'm very happy to be here tonight. I'm also part of the Penn TESOL East Board as the vice president. So um, we welcome all of our members and uh, hope to gain additional members. We'll be having a spring event as well. So just a sort of plug for that, uh, what's upcoming. And anytime we have a chance to talk about our classroom experiences and pedagogical strategies and uh, anything we can do to both adapt and adopt new things uh, is always just so wonderful uh, to have such experiences available. Great. Thanks. Uh, Suzette, you're next up on my screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're muted. <clears throat> So uh, currently I'm a substitute teacher at a public school, but um, prior to that, I had um, actually taught um, English as a foreign language in Sweden and uh, English in Austria. Um, primarily I taught ESL um, with institutions connected to universities. So University of Delaware, mm. um, Chestnut Hill College. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Elizabeth. Yes, um, my name is Elizabeth Eco, and I am a teacher of ESL at Delaware Technical Community College. There's a lot of college people here. <laughs> yeah. Not Delaware County, it's Delaware the state. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Justy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Justy DeFars, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm an adjunct lecturer of ESOL at um, Montgomery County Community College in uh, Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. And I have some students, especially the ones from Algeria who are multilingual before they even come into uh, our English classroom. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested in anything that can give my students a sense of power and control and where they can take the reins and uh, be in charge of their own learning and helping their classmates. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Kate Lafferty Danner. I'm from the Penn State Scranton campus. Um, currently I'm the writing center coordinator 
Um, previously, I've taught English composition for a number of years before coming here. Um, so I'm really just here to learn more about how I can help our uh, multilingual students. We have quite a few of them and um, we're really trying to make some strides as far as um, partnerships with other departments and things like that, um, grading, you know, the needs of our, our multilingual students into pretty much every, every department possible. So um, thank you all so much for putting this on today. Thank you. Becca. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm Becca. I am, let's see, I'm a TESOL master's student at the University of Pennsylvania, about to graduate. Hey. Um, <laughs> and I'm really interested in teaching English at the university level. Um, I've taught foreign language before, I've taught EFL and ESL adult mm -hmm. classes. Um, and I'm all about power, like, <laughs> uh, like just centering the resources that students bring into class, and uh, including the languages they speak and know and the cultural practices they they know and that they bring and I'm interested in how I can capitalize more on what they bring into the room so that they can feel a sense of agency and accountability over what's going on in their learning. Great, thank you, thank you. Uh, Kadima, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Kadima? Kadima? Oh, muted. <laughs> I have to unmute myself. Uh, Kadima Bukasa. I teach uh, ESOL class at, uh, with the school district of Philadelphia. <laughs> Joanna. <laughs> oh, I'm muted. <laughs> oh, what about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Joanna. I teach ESL at the Community College of Philadelphia. This semester, I'm teaching reading, writing, advanced for advanced students and also for intermediate. So I know that the last PT conversations I went to was a big hit. I really enjoyed it. And I like the fellowship. It's nice to be with my colleagues from all mm -hmm. over. And my students are multilingual. And yet I'm telling them, showing them, wanting, expecting that they're going to write in a certain way, write them clearly, <laughs> clear. And they're even in problems like, you know, doing brainstorming. I'm thinking to myself, if I were to instruct everything in their first language, they would be fine, but I'm doing mm -hmm. it in English and mm -hmm. I just have to remember that. I always remember that, but I just am struck by that. Right, right. I just, yeah. you know, I love hearing from everybody here. So I'm happy to mm -hmm. be very excited. Thanks. Francie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I came a minute later or so. so. I don't know if you have questions for us. Just, um, just where you teach and maybe what interested attracted you to the topic or like that. Yeah, so um, I teach at Community College of Philadelphia. Um, I teach um, ESL and freshman comp. Mm -hmm. And um, this topic was extremely attractive to me. Um, what has been blowing my mind in the last, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> Mm -hmm. is why are these Western teachers so interested in travel abroad, but not at all looking at the wealth of culture and language right in front of them? Right. I tell them we're an international campus. You can't, you know, you can have an international experience at Brandywine if you, you know. They talk about students. it. They're right there in my class. Yep. And um, yep. last session, because Joanna talked about last session, Dr. Mm -hmm. Bukasa, I went to yeah. an excellent uh, presentation. It broke my heart, <laughs> but it was, it broke my heart. And, um, you know, and it came to mind since his presentation this month, when an Albanian student said, when I corrected him and he said, well, in Albanian, it's okay. And I said, instead of like, you're not in Albania, <laughs> you know, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, you're right, you're right. Yeah. And um, here's another way too for academic English. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's so nice to have these. Thank you, Mac, for telling me about it. Yeah, thanks, Mac. Yeah. How Helene. There's a Helen and a Helene. <laughs> Helene, and that's yes. a great segue to what why I'm here. Um my my lens is the culturally responsive sustaining education lens. Yeah. And I see them as experts. They don't even know it. Yeah. Uh, but but on their own culture and you know, the fit, what does the fish know of water? They're inside the water, you know, yep, yep. So 
part of I part of I think our our mission or our goal is to help us all understand our own culture and to have them all understand their culture. And you always do a better job of that when you look at each other's. Yes. And they're certain they're certainly um, experts on their own without realizing it. And we need them to be experts on ours if they're gonna, you know, survive and get along. So the culture yeah. piece is part of the language piece. They're you know together. You're speaking. Oh, I forgot to say who I am. I'm sorry. That's okay. Content first. Uh, Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm the interloper here or one of them um, Mm -hmm. because I'm from New York, but um, I did a lot of presentations at affiliates this year uh, because I didn't have to get on a plane or go anywhere. Yeah, I did in California. um, I wish it wasn't with a plane, but yeah. Yeah, I I mean, we were looking at the checks I wrote this year. He said, you joined all these different states, you know, (laughs) I'm like, yeah. Global (laughs) education now, yep. (laughs) Helen, how about what you've got to introduce yourself here? Yeah, hi, I'm Helen. I work with adult basic education students Mm -hmm. uh, in ESL, and um, I have students who speak, you know, different languages in the classroom. So I'm really interested in this topic, especially like um, there are times when I ask my students, for example, how do you say this uh, in Spanish or in in your language? And um, they, you know, they they are happy that I'm asking about that. So I'm just looking into ways of how I can help my students further uh, in the classroom to help them have uh, more educational gains. And and thank you, everybody. And uh, Sibo? Yes, I am from Albania University and I'm the Director of International Student Recruitment. Uh, we have a dramatic increase of the international student population. I don't mm-hmm. know, sometimes that everybody says the pandemic it decreased the international student recruitment and then it is also, you know, the opposite here. Wow. I'm trying to, um, to you know, help the faculty, help the staff to understand the international student population. So whenever I see the workshops and I try to uh, join just to learn more <laughs> from the right, right. Staff, from their experience, how can I bring more to the campus that they can have the much better smooth transition uh, and this big changes. All right, great thing. Well, I will try. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so my, the main thing I'd like to talk about is, are, is this uh, global dialogue series that I started on my campus about five or six years ago that I think really transformed the, the campus environment. And we have global conversations six times a year. Um, but I guess because I was thinking I have like, a, I didn't know who would be in my audience and what other backgrounds you'd be in. I kind of front loaded a couple other ideas in the beginning too of other things I do. And then I'll share um, about the the global dialogue series. So I'm thinking I'll talk for about 15 minutes and share um, kind of some of the stuff I've been doing on my campus and then open it up to questions and then also sharing things you're doing on your campuses. So I put in the chat um, a link to the PowerPoint just because I put links in there that some more links than I'll show when I'm talking now, but maybe you could use as a reference later if you want to go back and look at anything. I thought that would be the the best way to do it. So um, I will just share then um, my PowerPoint and I'll, you know, talk for a few minutes and then, you know, get the questions going, you know. So let's see if I can uh, get to the right page here. All right. Uh, From the beginning. Okay, please. There we are. Okay, so our topic, let me close this down so I'm not looking at too many things. Um, Our topic is making multilingual students the experts. So how can I create opportunities for global dialogue? And I'm meaning that in the classroom and then also kind of across campus and in the campus environment. I am from Penn State Brandywine, which is a, has about 1,300 students. We're in a suburb outside of Philadelphia, which has, um, so we have both urban and suburban students. So we're really diverse in students' educational backgrounds. Um, we also have one in five students speaks a language other than English at home out of our student population. We have a growing international student population. Pre-pandemic, we had about 32 to 34 students a year who are on international student visas but we have approximately 60 different countries represented because we have a long-standing history of having a lot of immigrant students or a lot of students whose parents have immigrated to the US at our campus. 
about four or five years ago, we got a 250 bed residence hall, which is what's attracting our international students. But we do kind of have a commuter campus that's starting to have a more residential feel. Um, my role, I have a really cool job. I am the coordinator of multilingual and international student programs, which means I teach half time. I teach in what we call our multilingual student course cluster, uh, which we've had for about 20 years. And it's a, a cluster of courses for students um, who speak more than one language. We specifically call it multilingual student course cluster because we see the multilingualism as a strength, not a deficit. Um, I've been really excited the last few years, a lot of my courses in the multilingual student course cluster have been both um, monolingual domestic students and multilingual students. So it's been really nice to have that kind of cross-cultural uh, talk going on in the classroom. Uh, so I coordinate that cluster, which um, includes like I teach a freshman English course, uh, first year composition, uh, someone else teaches an American studies course, um, there's a reading and study skills course. I teach comparative international literature and film in the spring. So we have a whole gamut there. Um, as the coordinator of multilingual and international student programs though, half my job is more of a student life type role where I run international student orientation. I run an orientation course for the students. I'm their mentor. I get to run all the fun events like the, the American type things like the trips to New York and DC and the big Thanksgiving feast and all that kind of stuff, which we make halal by the way, so all the students can participate. Um, and then, and with vegetarian options. Um, and then I also um, help students run a lot of cultural events on campus. We have a big Chinese New Year celebration, Diwali, all kinds of things like that going on as well. And I try to give students leadership opportunities to run those things for the entire campus. Uh, so just kind of getting back to our topic here, one of our goals as teachers, hopefully one of our main goals as teachers, is to affirm the language, literacy, and life experiences that English learners come with. I know at, at my level of my students, I call them multilingual, but they're all, you know, English learners in some way or academic English learners in some way. So that's kind of what you want to... I, Try, strive to be doing inside and outside the classroom. And my job really lets me look at the whole student. And, and so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, the other, along with that, oh, come on, I'm clicking. Okay, um, another quote, and this has to do with deeper learning, but I think it has to do with even more than that. Um, in spite of the many, this quote has um, says, in spite of the many challenges they face, and perhaps because of them, English language learners can also be viewed as advantaged in certain ways, possessing some important skills and dispositions that monolingual and mo monocultural students may lack. So, you know, they've gone through hardship, struggle, struggle, hard work, cultural differences, all kinds of things that the monolingual students and mo monocultural students can certainly be learning from. And, and these are definitely strengths. And I actually put a link in here to that um, the kind of report that this uh, quote came from. So first I wanna just share kind of briefly and probably too quickly, but just kind of give an overview of some of the, the things that, that I do in my classroom and in my, at my campus to kind of help students share their strengths and their background knowledge. Um, and then I'll kind of focus more on the global dialogues. So in the classroom, um, I think it's really important to be providing topic choices in assignments. People, students can write about things they're interested th in, things that they're involved in, things that they're expert in, things that they know about culturally. Um, and that way, it really, you know, in some ways, it, it, it takes some of the load off. Um, they can certainly learn more deeply about the topic, but it takes some of the load off so they can, they can focus on all the grammar things but the, and the language issues but they can really, you know, express themselves. I notice, you know, I know a lot of students from um, different cultural backgrounds do not have a lot of experience expressing their own opinions, um, sharing their own ideas. So I do things like a this I believe essay where they share their personal beliefs, a definition essay where they choose one word from their native language or a word they find unusual or important to them in English and they define it. Um, but my favorite thing I do that really, I think, has students being able to share their culture or what they love or what they're involved in are, are photo essays. Uh, in my photo essays, the students are writing about an experience um, that they've had telling a story of their experience, but they also incorporate some outside sources um, to kind of show how that experience is bigger than them. But we use Adobe Spark, which is free for students, and it is such an easy way to make websites um, 
really quickly with beautiful photos where students can share about their lives. And it's been some of the favorite things my students have, have done, especially during the pandemic. Um, one of my um, domestic students was just, it was her favorite thing of, 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 the, of the year was when everyone got to share their photo essays with each other and learn about each other. So I'll show um, a sample one of that super quickly too. Um, problem solution essays, you could have pick a problem from your native country, how it, might it be solved, what are some proposed solutions, what do you think the best solutions are. So there are ways that students can kind of, you know, pick things that, that they're interested in and share. I also believe that the, the, the more you include readings from diverse backgrounds, um, the more likely students are going to be comfortable and be in a comfortable classroom environment where they can share their expertise or their own experiences in that culture when you're reading something from that culture, because everyone's sharing and everyone's doing it and you're not calling on them and you're not saying, so what does China think about this? You need to be the spokesperson for your country, you know, so kind of creating an environment where diverse um, voices are heard um, in the in the readings and in the content can help them kind of share their own diverse voices. Uh, an activity I love to do is have students share um, their names and the meaning of their names and how they got their names, because you'll find in a lot of cultures, there's a really great story behind that. Um, sometimes for us, it's just like mom thought it sounded cool, but, uh, but um, it, it makes for a really nice um, way to kind of learn about each other and each other's cultures. Um, and another thing I've done a lot, um, which I really enjoy doing is, um, collaborating with other professors and having joint class meetings. So for example, for a professor of education, when her, she wants her students to learn about what education is like for students in other parts of the world, because you're going to have multilingual students in your class, we'll have a joint class and we'll talk about education and my students can share their experiences and the um, the students in the other class can ask questions and they can kind of go back and forth. Um, we've done that too in like first year experience classes or cl there was a class that was talking about personal values and beliefs. So we did a joint class on that so that you could really get a multicultural perspective. Um, just to show you super quick here, the, um, let me have to make this smaller though, oops. <laughs> Escape. Yeah. So the um, sample to show you a sample photo essay, um, and you can click on these yourself. But students, um, this one is not the most, um, as far as the English language use, it might not be the best in the class. But this student um, had was repeating freshman composition because he had taken it with another professor before. And he really got into this topic because he wanted to be a chef. And so he was able to tell how much he loves Chinese food and with his grandfather and you know, all that and the whole story of, of what he loves about American food and Chinese food and how he cooks. And so it really was a way for him to share his knowledge about Chinese food to the whole class. Um, there are lots of other ones in there um, as well. There's one student um, who took a trip to, um, who um, when he came to the American high school from Taiwan, he found he had a lot more free time than he did in Taiwan. And so he joined, the lacrosse team and he shared kind of that experience there um, of what it was like to learn lacrosse and to play with you know all the students in his high school and things like that so there are a lot of other ones here um, this one's my favorite about the student uh, one of my favorites is student talking about how she traveled all over the world so she never really felt like she had found a home and then she realized she was a global citizen and the whole world was her home and her photos are just gorgeous um, but they're really ways to get to know the student for students to share their own experiences and what's important to them and they get really excited about this um, and then there are more than that we actually I actually shared on my campus page okay so that's let's see so let's see um, so outside the classroom oh, where's my picture there was a picture okay no picture. Um, so you can invite, um, suggestions would be to invite or nominate multilingual students for leadership positions across campus. Sometimes they need an invitation. Maybe it's a little more, um, they're a little more uncomfortable in the academic environment. They don't really know all the social cues. They don't know how to navigate things, but invite, nominate students to um, be on position, leadership positions in your campus. I have several peer mentors that work for me in my office. Um, helping multilingual students plan cultural events for the whole campus. And, and those events provide authentic food. We've worked with our food services where we can actually provide that our campus dining services will actually take our students' menus, uh, family recipes, and um, make them and let the students taste test them and then use those when they serve 
um, the food. And I was a stickler for this because we used to be able to order from outside restaurants. And when we got new campus dining, we were no longer allowed to do that. So they developed a six week program, a six week, a six week procedure just for me because I was so um, wanting students to have authentic food experiences. And so they will actually work with the students and their recipes. Um, they also have really um, diversified the food offerings in the cafeteria so, you know, students can get just hot water or a hard boiled egg for breakfast or whatever, um, you know, and just a variety of dinner options. So, you know, really giving the students some feeling of belonging there. Um, I've had uh, some of my multilingual students invited as guest speakers in classes. I've expressly invited them to campus events. Um, I've collaborated with other departments, such as our civic engagement office, so that they could um, they would do a, a bilingual um, story time with multilingual story time where they would read children's books to kids in to say in Chinese and then in English or whatever um, other languages they were doing. And you know, I also coordinate the multicultural club to kind of give students a feeling of belonging. Um, so what I really want to talk about the most, though, are these global dialogue lunches that I started about five or six years ago. And it was just really an idea of a way to give students uh, the time to, a time to share their own perspectives on a topic. And you can see this is one of our sessions. Um, during the time of COVID, they are no longer lunches. Um, I still get a lot of people over Zoom. But um, during um, pre-COVID times, we would... Um, consistently get 50 to 75 um, attendees at our events. I would serve pizza. I had a budget enough to be able to serve pizza and water. Um, and then a lot of faculty and staff will come as well, which I think is another really cool offshoot of this. Besides students getting to know about each other, um, the, um, the faculty and the staff also get to know about the students. So what happens in a global dialogue lunch? Okay, so basically what I do is at the beginning, like. Uh, at, at one point before a semester begins, I send out an invitation to faculty and I ask, is anyone interested in leading a global discussion on a topic of their choice? And we've done a lot of things. I've had climate change. Um, how does climate change affect your country? Um, music, what kinds of music are popular, is popular? Uh, mental health and, dis and invisible disabilities. How are they treated in other countries? Um, what is a healthy relationship, uh, all kinds of things like that. So the faculty will, will um, suggest topics or sometimes I will put out topics if I've talked to students. Now I've got a, uh, a bunch of students that I'll consult with and say, what kind of topics do you want to see? So we come up with topics. The faculty are invited to lead the discussion. They love it because I do everything else. So all they have, you know, this is a nice little, they come in lead the discussion, but I'll recruit the students, student panelists from students that I know, students in my class, students in my club. Um, they, sometimes students, uh, faculty will recruit um, students from their classes as well. Um, I fill out all the forms to get a room set up, order the food. I have a Spotify uh, list of music, popular music from around the world the students have given me to kind of draw students in. Um, before the event starts, we have uh, flags that hang up everywhere. So it's kind of a, it's a big event on campus. Um, and then the panelists, uh, usually we have about, I would say about four, four to six, three to six panelists, but four is usually a good number for the hour that we've allotted for this. Um, they're given, right now we do it, so we give them a, some, a few guiding questions to answer in a five to seven minute very casual PowerPoint. It could be a PowerPoint with just some photos that they happen to have. Sometimes they'll share a music video. Sometimes they'll share screenshots of their, um, their um, social media, if they're talking about social media in other countries. So um, now we've, we've kind of evolved into having these short PowerPoints. But in the past, it's been as simple as, here's a list of the types of questions a faculty member will ask you. Just answer, you know, you don't really need to prepare a lot. Just kind of answer what you, um, whatever you um, want to say. So that's kind of the structure it's been. Um, and then at the end, we have a time for a question and answer and some sharing from the audience. So the, some of the topics we've done. So we try to pick topics that are interesting to the students and some that will attract them. So here's what, how do you decide if someone is good looking? So we try to give it some kind of question that'll get students interested. And so then it, we, what we're talking about is, you know, 
are different things considered beautiful in different countries and different cultures? What, what are different beauty regimens and, and things people do around the world to try to look good? Um, another one we've done recently, uh, voting in elections in other countries. We did this before the election where um, we actually had a faculty members as well as students talking about um, what voting and government look like around the world. So you want to pick something the students know about. This one was a little tougher for students to, all the students to have background knowledge on. Um, but here's some sample topics uh, that we've talked about. And so, I mean, you can, again, look at this later too, but we've done everything from sports, pop culture, challenges and opportunities of being bilingual, um, go, global advertising trends. That was fun. We watched the business professor ran it and we ran, watched commercials from around the world and analyzed them. Um, what I want you to know about my country. So peace and conflict, depending on the professor. So it really creates a kind of global, um, it, it creates a lot of faculty buy-in. Why is that doing that? All right, why is my slide all screwy? Let's do this again. All right, I don't know why it's doing that. Come on, that is very strange. What did I do? Okay, let me see if I can get back to that or not. All right, there we go. Um, so there are lots of different topics that you, you can do. Um, my tips for success for this are to choose topics of interest to the students, that the students have background knowledge on so they're comfortable talking about it. We did one on COVID and the effects of COVID-19 around the world and how different governments are responding to it. Anything that you think of. Um, I involved the multicultural club in recruiting and advertising. We provide a schedule at the beginning of the semester and encourage faculty to include it in the syllabi and in the assignments. Um, sometimes it's extra credit, sometimes everyone's required. A lot of the business students are required to attend at least one. Um, but we really get a really good discussion going um, from the audience too, and sometimes even lingering afterwards. Uh, if there are other events going on campus, we'll try to link them. If it's healthy relationships week, we might pick a dating topic that time. Um, we send a reminder the day of, and we really just try to keep it informal and build community and that this is the Brandywine community talking about something interesting. And the faculty members being from different um, departments really allows us to get some expert like um, information thrown in now and then, but it's primarily what the students want to share. So some of the effects um, that we really have found a lot of students and faculty and staff have discussions after the events and they just stand around and talk for a while. We'll have, you know, uh, at our very first one at the end, some of the students were, the Chinese students were showing Chinese dating apps to some of the um, American freshmen. So it, it, it's always different. Um, there's a sense of community and belonging. It's like, it's a Brandywine tradition now. It's who Brandywine is. We are an international campus and we have, international events regularly and international discussions regularly and we learn from each other. Um, it's increased student student relationships. There's some students that come to all these. They just come to all of them. They just love them. Um, others come because they're required for a class and that's okay too. Um, but it, I think it's also really given faculty and staff um, a good insight into the students on our campus. Uh, you know, and sometimes students that um, maybe are quiet in class, when you get them in this situation, they are much more likely to share. Um, on the panel, if they don't want to be in the panel, maybe they'll add a comment or something afterwards or ask a question. So it builds confidence and it increases multilingual student leadership. They're used to being seen on campus and they usually they get involved in other things kind of as well. Okay, so questions and discussion. So I know I, I zipped through that because I did really want to get to the discussion part, um, but just, you know, any comments, questions, comparisons to things you do? Well, I, can you hear me? Yes. I just wanna say what a wealth of materials and information and activities you are doing at Penn State at Brandywine. I'm just so impressed. And here's all the materials you showed us are just like so well made. And mm -hmm. students are very lucky to have you as part of the team there. We, yeah, we have a great campus. We really do. <laughs> so. really, really. I just want to add, um, echo the same what my colleague, Joanna Lebov is, what a presentation. And I would, I would, I would use the phrase "best practices in the field." Mm -hmm. Wonderful, both inside the classroom and on campus. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, 
that one good thing is that the institution, it, it looks to me that the institution has this as a vision and the mission because they have given you as one person responsible for looking all these things. Whereas we, we are part of institutions where um, teachers are expected to do everything. Sometimes. Yes, yes. But I see that in, in, in your case, it looks like it's, it's from everyone. The institutional goal is to promote multiculturalism on campus. And you're yeah. doing a wonderful job. Thank you. I mean, I think the original creation was because we were getting all these international student visa students and nobody knew what to do. So they made a mishmashy job. But since they didn't have a good definition of it, we I just kind of tried to morph it into what, you know, the campus needed. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm happy with, with that. But I'm wondering if anyone else is doing anything else on their campuses to share or if you have anything like some of these or in your classrooms. Because, you know, I mean, everyone's doing some pretty cool stuff, I'm sure. Yeah, we've been doing, um, I actually make, uh, have the students do photographic essay, but turn it into uh, YouTube videos. So short clips oh, fun. that tell a story and then the addition of music. And a lot of times that multimodal or multi-genre aspect is really intriguing for students. So mm -hmm. I always give them the option to write a traditional essay if they feel more if they feel completely uncomfortable with some sort of tech uh, exploration so I do still give the options to sometimes you know um, if it depends on the assignment but I'll still give them options to sort of switch it up a little bit if they are completely uh, uncomfortable uh, with tech but and we also use WordPress as a blog so we started doing um, outside guest speakers and conversations and then students would have a lot to say and we'd run out of time or whatever so we actually added a WordPress blog and everyone basically just writes their login information and then we can share that and then everyone adds everyone else's um, login info and then basically you have access to whatever's going on in the blog. So they that's, really, really enjoyed that. That's cool. so we, used the, we used the blogs first for the photo essay, but then when I found Adobe Spark, that seems to work better for photos. I think for your purpose, right. the blog is better, but yeah. Yeah, those are all different assignments. Yeah, I think there's so many different things we can do with tech too. It's so yeah. nice that technology has gone and come such a far, uh, so we've come such a long way, especially with the ease of use, particularly. So, Other things to share or problem solving, or, you know, you've got all these experts here now, so. Yeah, but I wanted to ask how many of these global uh, dialogue lunches do you have per semester? I do three a semester, yeah. So, and, and sometimes I get faculty wanting me to add more and I won't because I'm afraid of it being like too many times and then we kind of dies, but three a semester has seemed to, to work. Cool, thank you. I simply have a question uh, on the presentation. It was great to learn about, you know, different practices but how did uh, COVID affected uh, your students on campus? And how do you proceed with the recruitment? It looks like you have a diversity. Yes. Uh, in your campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you, go ahead. How do we diver well, I mean, it's, of course, everything's been on Zoom. So our global dialogues have been on Zoom and we've had more like 25 people at them and, you know, the, the larger numbers we've had. Um, most of my students are in their native countries right now studying from there. You know, I think a lot of you have that situation. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that we do have some paid accepts and some accepts that I'm, you know, kind of going after now to try to get them excited about Brandywine. Um, so I know we will have some hopefully on campus. I think it all, a lot of, at least for the Chinese students, I heard embassies aren't open yet. So, you know, I don't know what that's going to do. So, um, but a lot of the other multilingual students, um, in some ways, I think we're lucky because a lot of them, if they're immigrant students or their parents immigrated here, um, a lot of them, their parents want them to stay ho closer to home during, um, you know, during COVID. So us being a commuter campus as well, we definitely picked up like we picked up more Indian students that are who are, who are on like um, their parents' work visas, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I think we definitely will have diversity. I think it's going to take us a little while to get all our international student visa students back, especially because University Park is going to try to steal them from us because they can. So, <laughs> anyway, anything else?
Oh, well, I have just a more, it's different from everyone else's, although I loved everything. Um, and I'm going to look at your PowerPoint. And what I'm interested in, if you would be willing, sure. do you mind sharing your 101 syllabus with me? One-on-one syllabus. One-on-one. One-on-one. Oh, you your freshman, freshman composition. Comp. Yes, I'm absolutely. Sorry. We say, we call it one-on-one. Your freshman comp, if you wouldn't mind sharing your syllabus, I just love your essay lineup. Oh, and, thank you. Um, and I, I would love to try some of them. Um, I'm, I never taught online before COVID. And so <laughs> we were given model courses. And I, of course, added to them. And I was kind of you know, limited because of my lack of tech. I'm the, un, you know, person who's not comfortable with tech, but learning. Mm -hmm. And I loved what you did. And um, I was kind of curious, this is a stupid question, but no, no, no. how do I pronounce your last name? Oh, it's like the weapon. It's Uzi. <laughs> it's Uzi. Uzi. Okay, yeah, it's, cool. it's a terrible name but to uh, marry and do <laughs> Not at yeah. all. Well, yeah. I don't know, how do you, is it okay to share the syllabus? Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to see if I can find my um, my syllabus in my computer documents right now um, so I can just um, share it here. Um, and it's acting wonky. I may have to email it. Let me see. Uh, why is it not showing me? There it is. Okay, so I'm going to try to share that as we're, as we're talking. CDE English 15 syllabus spring open okay so i just sent it hopefully let me know if you can open it so <laughs> i love technology now i don't like zooming all day with students but there are some good things <laughs> so. well thank you deb so much thank it was a so wonderful much. presentation and um yeah and that's that's great that she was able to put mm -hmm. that in the chat for us so thank you so much sure, sure. this was a great presentation thank you i enjoyed it thank you uh, I, have, I have a question we have time for one more question or? yeah so that was fascinating. You talked about the COVID, and now that was a, a topic for one of your lunch and discussions. Yes. Do you happen to remember, like, what were the students' points of views about it? What, what was the, was their take? Because they're international students, were they would it be different than a domestic student? Um, well, I mean, it, we were, what we were talking about was kind of like, what it, what is it like now in your country? How is your country handling um, lockdowns? How is your country doing? vaccinations, all that kind of stuff. So I had Chinese students saying we're back to normal almost and also showing how you're tracked on your, um, yeah, how you're tracked on your, your phone and all that kind of stuff. And then we have students from Anguilla talking about how, or in other countries talking about how it takes weeks to get results from a COVID test still in their countries or our island locked down completely. We have hardly anything. So it was really kind of that variety of what their daily experiences are like, you know? I don't know if I answered your question though. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Just wanted to get a feel of it. Thank, thank you, fascinating. Yeah, thanks. Oh, okay, so I put the, is the syllabus, I mean, I can also, I mean, I don't know whether it's just to send it to Mac if you're not able to get it from the- um... I will share with everybody. Okay. Do thank you, you are you able to take it, Mac, off the um, chat? Okay, let me- I already it, did, it. and I saved it. Mac, I can send it to you. Okay. I already took yeah. it off the chat and, and opened and saved and it. So yeah, I can do that. Thank I you. also saved it. Okay, yes. so the, the only thing is that I, I for uh, I, I'm doing we're doing syllabus. I'm in a pro professional learning group where we're doing reviewing our syllabi, and I realized that toward the end I stopped listing all the readings. I just put them all up on Canvas on our learning month. You know, it's not every reading's listed there. So you know, feel free to email me if you want to know any specifics about readings or materials that we use. I'm happy to share. So thank you. Sure. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yes, and our recording will be posted on our website after uh, afterwards. So we're hoping to to get those up quite as soon as Zoom, of course, sends us the <laughs> sends us the audio and the you know put, brings it to us through email. So hopefully right, we'll get right. that up on the website uh, as soon as possible. So again, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful presentation, and I, and well, that concludes our TESOL conversations for this evening. So thank you so much. Right. <laughs> Happy <laughs> start, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.